Okay, so we're back with the uh, uh, street legal install on our Polaris Sportsman 570. We've gotten the wire ran, we've taken off the dash cluster, um, and we got all this installed. And so we'll take and show you how we got it set up and so we can work again. So basically when the key's on, um, the horn does work. The turn signal, so we got a signal here so we know when it's left on. Um, in the back over here, you can see we actually tied it in to the light here. We'll show you how we did that. Instead of putting an LED out here, we put it inside here. Um, and then if you come up here, you'll see the front one here that we installed. So um, I'll go ahead and shut it off. It's actually switch to the key. Uh, here's our flasher. Our flasher is uh, going to be mounted down here on this bracket down here. We'll show you that in a little bit. But what we did, the blue, turn, the blue wire goes to the turn signal. So we power the flasher up. Um, the power comes up into the flasher and then back into the wire up here going through the gray. And then what happens is when it comes down, we split it to three LEDs on this side. The orange will go to the left side. What we did here is we just ran it through here, followed the other headlight um, wire. And then if you come on up here, ran it up into here, and it comes up in this wire loom here. So we'll get this all nice and tidy once we're done. In the back, we tucked it up under here. So we tucked it up under here. Is that visible? Okay, we come across this box here, then up here. We ran it across, and then we spliced for, this is going to the left signal, this is going to the tail light for the license plate, and then this is just a ground, and we split the ground, having universal. So before we're done, we're gonna run some wire loom up in here to take and um, conceal this, tape it off, keep these fittings dry, even though we're using um, soldered heat shrink fittings for a lot of stuff um, anyways and then it just chases along the frame here comes on up comes up over in this cavity again into another wire loom so when we're done there we'll show you more about how it is one thing we did do is on the cluster we actually put the spade terminals so if we want to take the cluster all the way off we have the ability to and we put the spades opposite so male on one end female on the same wires coming out so they can't get confused. So, Okay, so we're gonna get ready to do some of the LEDs on this side. As we're doing it, we'll take some um, video of that. Okay, so we're gonna put the other hole on this side here, the left side for the turn indicator. So we just gotta pop out the grommet. And then we just take and lay it out where we want it to where it's pretty close to where the last one was. Okay, so then I'm going to get a tape measure, make sure we're pretty close to the same part of center, so I'll be right back. This one's about one inch from the edge, one and a half inches from this bottom line here. So our grommet will probably be, so we want it right about that hole right there. And then we just use a three quarter paddle bit, and we'll switch sides over here. Go real gentle here. The one thing I do like to do is, if possible, I do like to hit it from the reverse side so we don't get as many burrs on the inside. But it's not as bad as the plastic, but we want to make sure we get the grommet to sit in the groove without the fur. Just pop it in. And then once we lock the LED in, it'll stay on this particular model. These ones had a little bit of a groove here, so we're putting these up and down. Um, it seemed like it was, uh, we wanted the brightest ones on the turn signal, but so we're going to go run our wire um, and then we'll get the connectors on here and then we'll pop this in after we get all that done. Okay, so we'll be back in a minute here. Okay, so we're just going to show you how to do one of these um, connections here for the heat shrink. You know, if you guys are attempting this, you're already pretty smart. You know a lot of this stuff that's going on. What we're really doing is saving you time to um, how to figure out and plan it. So you you know, save a few seconds, minutes, hours. Um, you know, so on these LEDs, white was the ground. And so 
Um, the black is where the power needs to come into. So we want to put this one on the one in the um, in the compartment because we want it to be protected. If we ever plug, unplug it to take the top off, we want this to be able to not have to short out if someone's testing it. So we'll put this one here because this will never have power on it um, if you take it off. And it's simple. Um, you know, just crimp these terminals. They're pretty nice. Some of the terminals I like too are these ones here, which maybe we'll show you too on those. These are actually terminals that um, are self soldering with heat shrink, so it seals it and solders. Pretty awesome. If they had some of those in the, these type of connectors, we'd be using them. The white's the ground, black's the positive. We tried to go the other direction. The LEDs would not give us um, the flashing that we wanted. So. Okay, so then we just use this little heat gun. We do have a big heat gun too, but try to use this. The thing I actually did too is, since I'm heating this now, I'm actually trying to trim this so I actually have, it's not blocking my cavity when I go to um, put in the mail spade. So. With about, we spent about 95 bucks on everything, including mirrors. We already had mirrors in this machine. Um, one thing I would tell you is we probably really could have done it for probably about 60 and for about another 10 15 dollars, we could have done both of them. Um, and if you already have wire in these butt connectors, you can do it cheaper. I bought more just because I always like to buy as I use and replace them so I'm never out so if you got all this stuff in house you're going to be pretty cheap we'll try to put some links on our material too for you guys so we got our heat shrinking done we're just going to pop this in on this particular model you can see I put the dark part of this one up we just want to make sure it matches as the other one Simple, the pressure of here, the friction, holds it there. There we go. So now we have our right and left indicators. And then we have our pigtails. So now all we have to do is uh, finish the other ones. And then we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and get set up for the front turn signal. And then we'll show you how we did that one. Okay, so what we did here is to get our line. We have a piece of paper kind of flush with this line here and then we just marked it across like that and then we came from this point here 705 H you mind holding that for me down there So that's where we cut this one out pretty close to where we have that one. The one thing you want to be careful on here, um, just when you go to do a breakthrough, be careful because you are hitting the housing on the back here. So, but same thing, pretty good here. Couple burrs here, so we'll get the razor knife. Cut them off real fast. Yeah, the rest of them is pretty small. They'll fold in. Then we just pop. Make sure you get your pencil marks rubbed out. Pop these in. And then we'll get the lights popped in in a couple minutes here. So now we're going to go get our wires hooked up and our, our wire and our wire loom. What we're doing is we're adding three foot of wire to here and then we're going to take in. So on this one we're going to do black and yellow. All the grounds will come to a common spot up in the top up here. The yellow will come to a common spot then they'll hook to the orange here at the top for the left turn signals. Once we get the wire loom and all that put on we'll come back and we'll show you how we route it and put it okay, in. So we're going to show you how we did this one because we are using the solder terminals here. 
Um, you want to take and make sure you twist your wire around so you can get the connector back over and then it just slides over until you get this solder, little bit of solder right in the middle of here. The main hard thing with this is with this little one it'll take a lot longer. Do If you do it with the big one what happens is it goes pretty fast but what you have to watch out for is melting the wire so you gotta be paying attention so we'll give this a try see what happens. We have a hot high and low here well, hot and cold, I should say. So, so that all, that's all it takes. You want to make sure you get the ends over here. You can finish it with the smaller ones if you want. If you, um, so these are really good at stopping contaminants from getting in here, causing erosion. If you do melt this a little bit, don't worry. Just get you some heat shrink tube and put on it. It'll usually be pretty good. But anyhow, we, I like this method a lot. It seals it in pretty good. We'll go ahead and get the other one done, get the wire loom ready, and then we'll start yeah, running. So we it. just got done um, building our wire loom and wires. We're actually going to feed it from into here, come back up into this, behind this piece of molding, come up and run it up on this side, and then bring the harness up in here. So all you do on this side, you just feed it in, like we talked about on the other one. I want to make sure I match. So, Ethan, are my lines on that light going sideways or up and down? Up and down. Just sideways. Sideways, okay. So, I'm just popping it in. There we go. So, my light's in place. I'm going to try to get this up to him. I put a little twist like this on the wire. So when he pulls it in, that's good. So before we go any further, I'm gonna have him, you can drop that. We're gonna have him take some cable ties and tie this into place so we're not pulling it out. And then, but before you stop, we'll go ahead and wrap this up up behind here. There we go, so this will kind of run right up here. Got all of our wires and plugs. So we'll go ahead and get our cable ties in place, get this mess cleaned up a little bit, get it ready, and then um, before we hook all this up, we'll go. We'll start on the back, but we'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so we got the front all done, the wires hooked up. And we're going to take the tail light out now. There's three little, I believe they're seven sixteenths. Yeah. So we got to make sure we also unhook the current um, bulb in here. What we did is we actually took and drilled in the center of this, make sure the element was clean and reflective. We put the orange ones in here. We had some red ones we purchased. We are ending up um, with some extra parts because we just always order more in case we, uh, just to make sure we have enough. But um, hindsight, I would have ordered white ones if they were possible. I didn't even check, but that would have made it a little bit more brighter. So we'll go ahead and get this ready to drill and then we'll get back here. Okay, so I marked where I thought was center. So we took a pair of needle nose, got this piece out. So I'm just gonna blow this out real fast, I'll be right back. So I'm gonna plug the glue gun in, let it start warming up. So what we did, we just popped this in here. And then we put the light in backwards we ended up gluing around all of here so we actually had more security of being waterproof. I have to get a little moisture, but I think it when I get it here. There we go. So that's all it seated was backward, just that far. And then we took the glue gun. And I just put a little bit more in here. The wires aren't going to get pulled out, and the wire's going to go this way. And remember, this is actually heat shrink here too, so you can go ahead and tighten that up more if you want. And that's all we did with this to get this one working. Let this dry, we'll get our fittings on here, and then we'll go ahead and check it to make sure that the LED is still good, should be. We'll start the install on the back one. Okay, we'll be back a couple minutes. Okay, so we just finished putting all the connections here. The yellows for the uh, blinker, then we got the ground for the blanker. 
This one here, the tan and this pigtail is actually going to be to run over to the uh, license plate light for so we'll hook the tail lights. And typically we wouldn't run piggyback all these grounds, but this is all LEDs and you know very low voltage stuff like that. So once we get this all in, we'll pop the wire loom on. So. Pop this back together. So I'll go ahead and get this all in, and then we'll get the wire loom on. Then we'll get all the front organized, and we'll show you what it's like with the lights when we're done. And the last thing we have to make it straight legal is the license plate bracket with a light, little LED above that. Besides that, it's almost ready to be put back together. So, um, anyways, let me finish this, and we'll get to the next. Okay, so we got this all back in. The wire looms in. We got the two wires coming back for the tail light, um, license blade light I'm calling it. If you walk around here you'll see we kind of got the wire loom put in and tied up through here. One thing you don't want to forget is we had to cut a couple of the um, transmission belt cup um, breather tube. So we want to make sure we put our um, cable ties back here. If you come up front here, kind of got this a little bit clean again coming up um, we put our relay just open the bracket right here and um, slid it down on a piece of metal the one thing I had to do is I actually had to use the, the point here to open it up the little clip in the back to get it and then slide it out otherwise it was too tight speedometer gauge console cluster whatever you want to call it start plugging in the wires So one thing I did leave here is a little ground for one more um, low voltage thing we're trying to do. These two terminals here we actually just capped off of the switch because they're for the high and low beam which we're just going to use as on and off. One of them will have power coming to a, another LED. The other thing is we took and put the yellow, little yellow heat shrink sink to shrink to show that. We got the blue coming in right here. Okay, and then the only thing left in this portion would be here. And so this would get tucked in behind the headlight, which we're not going to video you doing us doing the headlight for you. So let's see what happens. Okay, so we got it there. So on the other one we have it here like I mentioned. We have it here. Okay, so we'll switch it to the other side. Okay, so it works on the dash here, front and rear. Everything's working. As you can see, I saw about that bulb being out, so we'll get a new one of those. Blinker portion of it. Um, we already have the horn hooked up. Let's see. I believe we showed that already. Um, the only thing left, we already got the mirrors. The only thing left now would be the license plate bracket and the tail light, license plate light. So, so we had everything done on the four wheeler for the um, Street Leo kit except the license plate bracket. We purchased this from Amazon. The plastic is pretty crappy. I don't like it. It's um, it like $12. Uh, it, won't give me a good spot to mount it neither. So what I actually went to the Home Depot to get a piece of aluminum. It was actually cheaper to buy this than a piece of aluminum about this wide. So this was less than five dollars. We already have the LED light. Um, we did pick up two one-inch clamps. Um, plan ahead, you can save a little couple dollars, but um, not too bad. Six bolts. So what we're going to do is we're going to drill a couple holes here so it goes to the clamps and holds onto the bar in the back and then the license plate will go through here and then the light will just put in the center of the plate. One reason I'm doing it this way instead of using my plate holes on these clamps um, is because there's nowhere to hold the light and on the other machine we actually just put the hole through this LED and what happened was we had to take the LED out to uh, place replace the plate so we just want to avoid that next 
this time too. So we're going to get this cut on the bandsaw and then we'll be back. We got this cut out. Um, it was a no parking sign. Not that anybody's probably worried about that. So we'll go ahead and sand this down a little bit and then get it kind of cleaned up. So we'll be back with more and get ready to do that. Okay, so we're just going to take and sand. Okay, so we have pretty smooth edges. One of the reasons we actually have this offset is I only have about seven and a quarter inches. Um, there's some welds in the corner, but I want to make sure I have a sturdy spot for my plate too. So we'll go ahead and get a couple holes drilled here, and then um, we'll get her mount. Okay, so we made our bracket. We got a little LED on here. So underneath here, you can see the one inch pipe. We're gonna hang our plate back in here. And then we're going to run the wires, connect them up under here, and then we'll cable tie them together. So, Okay, and then pretty much put the same pigtails here for our colors. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get this tightened up, and then we'll finish by hooking the wires up at the front to the power, and then we'll give you a final demonstration after that. Ready? Okay, so we just finished the tail light, I mean the license plate. Here's our brown wire here. We kind of brought it back down. I don't know if you can see this right here, where we hooked in our power supply. There was another pigtail which was keyed also, so we cut the top of the heat shrink off, and we're just going to put this in there so the tail light is on whenever the key is on. I'd rather have it switch to the when the headlights are on, except what happens is on this particular machine, the lows are on by themselves, or you go to high and then the high is on by themselves. We haven't done the relay, so otherwise, I'd, if we'd done the relay already, I'd have that put on there. We ran that down in here. We should have power to the LED in the back. So what we're going to do right now is run it through, make sure everything's working, it's supposed to work. And then we'll take and wrap it up, we'll put it back together. You guys know how to get it apart. If you don't, then um, you can always ask questions, do more research. And then we'll get it all together and then we'll show everything working with it together with um, kind of a tool list, material list as best we can. So let's see if we can get this started here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and grab the camera and walk around. So you can see we have this one, this one. The rear back here. We got this bulb on order, yep. So we got our light here. Over the other side. That one. Our indicator got our horn. Okay, so. so pretty much that's everything we need to get a straight tape off. Um, just get our mirrors retight set. So we'll go ahead and get everything put back together and then see if we can get you guys a material list. Um, it was well worth it. We'd actually made quite a bit of um, savings if we did both of them at the same time. But okay, I'll talk to you shortly.